watching KUTV Primetime News with Omondi Otieno. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on KUTV Primetime News. You can share thoughts with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, KUTV Kenya and on Twitter, KUTV underscore Kenya. Now, elections in the past has been faced with a myriad of challenges. Since 1961, when Kenya started voting through universal suffrage, a number of changes have been enacted to improve the voting systems. Tonight, we are having a discussion with Anthony Kimani, founder of a startup working to incorporate technology and blockchain to better the election process. So, Mr. Anthony, thank you so much for dedicating your time for this discussion. You may introduce yourself to our viewers, they get to know who Anthony is. Hi. First of all, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Anthony Kimani, one of the, one of the co-founders of Brethren Technology. Uh, our goal is to help organizations conduct free, fair, credible, and transparent elections through use, use, using through use, using blockchain. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. That's so interesting. Now, uh, talking of elections, Anthony. Mm -hmm. um, how does your company envision to change the uh, the voting systems uh, through the blockchain? Okay, m maybe we should start by discussing the problem the the problem that we have right in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, so the IBC is mandated by the Kenyan constitutions to conduct election through some principles. Right. Uh, these principles. There are six principles. So the constitution mandates the IBC to conduct elections that are, okay, it's a, sh it's a short form, South uh -huh. So it's, the election should be simple. Mm -hmm. The election should be accurate. The election should be verifiable. Right. Yeah, the election should be secure and it should be accountable and it should be transparent. Right. So I think to use the IBC as a reference point, we, we need to see if it conducts elections through by using these principles. Right. So, for example, the principles of transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, using the majority full judge, Supreme Court majority full judgment uh, and the IBC reports. So, uh, and this is how they handle elections. In during voting, during voting. Uh, Polling clerks are supposed to fill up from 34A. I'll use presidential elections for simplicity purposes so right. that the viewers can understand what I'm talking about. Uh, during voting, after the votes have been counted, the polling clerks is supposed to fill up from 34A. Mm -hmm. So he fills this from 34A, he inputs these results mm -hmm. in, into the system, and then he, he scans this form then he sends it to the CTO. So this is a constituency telling officer. All right. Yeah, so after, se so uh, what you see when, so after sending it to the constituency telling officer, the constituency telling officer is supposed to fill form 34B. Right. So this form 34B is, he fills this form, then he sends it to form, he sends it to National Tallinn Center. All right. So in the National Tallinn Center, uh, the people there, which includes IBC chairman Mr. Afilache Bukati, uh, are supposed to use form 34A and form 34B mm -hmm. to see if they are matching. If they are matching, they're supposed to fill form 34C and then form, form 34D, which is used to declare the presidential winner. Yeah, winner. All right. So uh, during 2017, mm -hmm. what happened is we had form 34Bs, we had a complete number of form 34Bs, but, we, but the number of form 34As were around, were around 30,000 out of the possible 40,883. Mm -hmm. So the question the, the Supreme Court judges were asking is, how did how did the CTOs fill from 34 Bs and they did not have from the other from 34 A's? Yeah. So like the ju the judges were they they concluded that the election was not transparent. Right. Uh, that 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 was one of the reasons. And the second reasons the second the second reason is out of the the IBC took five thousand from. Form 34 is mm -hmm. for to check whether they 
they had any issues. So out of those 5,000 from 34 AS, 24, 000, 24, around 20 to 24% of them had some sort of error. Let's say they did not have signatures, for the, they did not have Pauline Clark signatures. Mm -hmm. Some of them did not uh, have security features which the IBC had said that every, every, every form is going to have security, security features. features. Yeah, and also some of them had arith arithmetic errors and by using that, by using, like, by checking this data, the Supreme Court decided mm -hmm. that these elections were not anywhere close to transparent. Right. So that is one of the reasons. The second reason mm -hmm. is we need to use the second principle that the IBC should follow when conducting and when conducting elections. Mm -hmm. So the second um, reason is, okay, the second principle is accuracy. Accuracy. Yeah, I, I shared with you a CSV file, right. uh, an Excel spreadsheet, mm -hmm. which shows that around 2.69 million votes were unaccounted for when the presidential results were being released in August 11th, 2017. Yes. 2017. Yeah, so it shows that like the elections, the 2017 elections, and the 2017 elections were not nowhere close to accurate. Right. Uh, and okay, even the October one, mm -hmm. they, they called a press conference. They, they see the, the then existing, okay, the existing um, C IBC CEO, right. he's called the chairman. Marjan, no, Marjan, he's Hassan Marjan. He's, mm -hmm. a, he's a CEO, he's the CEO of. IBC after Ezra was Chilobo yeah I was came out. yeah I was hosted out. Now Anthony, so, um, you've really stated well the the current problem that we're having with the system. Now narrowing down to what for you people are doing in uh, your company, because uh, you're coming up with uh, technology that mm -hmm. uh, would you know mitigate these problems that you've mentioned to us. Yeah. So in your in your statement, you told me that uh, you are using the blockchain technology. So yeah. kindly bring us to speed. What is blockchain and how does it work? And maybe how will it be incorporated to ensure that uh, most of these problems are well catered for? Okay, maybe okay, maybe okay. Uh, blockchain is a is a is a system mm -hmm. that contains a ledger that crypt cryptographically secures transactions mm -hmm. to help uh, for security purposes and f to make them permanent. So, for example, when like a bank, you know, like okay, let me use a bank because a bank is easier. Right. So. For example, Equity Bank. Equity Bank has only one server, has only one server in Nairobi. So when someone is, is in Nakuru, that server must send information to the central server in Nairobi, mm -hmm. which then sends information. If, if, one, if one wants to check their balance, their Equity Bank balance, they have only one central place to access this information, and that is Equity Bank central server. So when one wants to go uh, like to check the balance they use the central server but in blockchain the servers are decentralized mm -hmm. that is we have a lot of nodes in the network so uh, trans transactions and things l and information like your data balance is stored in all the computers that are connected to that network right so uh, uh, on that is the meaning of decentralized then all these transactions they are cryptographically secure yeah and so uh, that makes it very difficult for someone to change anything that is in the blockchain, mm -hmm. because uh, like there's a photocopy in, in every ma in every machine that is connected to that network. So, for example, in the terms of IEBC, mm -hmm. if we if we use the system, let's say, and we have fifty thousand polling stations, uh, for someone to to hack it, maybe like to hack into the system, it's going to be extremely difficult because all of this, for example, when someone casts a vote, mm -hmm. it's going to be recorded in all of these other networks. Right. So even it, it will require around someone to hack around 22,000. Okay, okay, assuming Takwana will have 50,000 polling station, it will require someone to hack at least 25,000 mm -hmm. one and one polling station. All right. Yeah. 
Now um, that is uh, well. Now in trying to revolutionize the election, mm -hmm. as uh, this system of blockchain has it been piloted uh, somewhere where you could maybe tell us uh, where it it was a success, or uh, is it something that you want to try it for the first time in our system? Okay, there are several companies that are that have tried to implement blockchain in voting. Mm -hmm. So the company, the company, the biggest company. It, Okay, it, it received a lot of private funding, private VC funding. It's called votes. It's in the United States, mm -hmm. so it has been used for vote. It has been used for voting in 29 counties in the United States. So the company has used it. It uses blockchain technology to store voter data, but we have we, like we are. We, our approach is using blockchain technology to do most, n not only store voter data right. to do almost everything mm -hmm. in in terms of uh, to do almost everything to store uh, like to do almost everything that we do when d conducting elections in the blockchain so that the transactions so that someone cannot hack into the system right yeah now um if you get to read about the blockchain technology there are some of the problems that uh, comes with this uh, blockchain technology mm -hmm. like uh, for instance we read about uh, scalability hackers uh, privacy and now the cost of implementing this uh, technology mm -hmm. don't you think this would in a way jeopardize the inf inef the efficiency of uh, applying this technology in our system Okay, in terms of scalability, mm -hmm. we are using EOSIO blockchain. Right. So it's a it's the most used blockchain in terms of volume, mm -hmm. and it's ve it's very scalable because you can change you can change the smart contracts. So it, a smart contracts is what is used to interact with the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So it's very scalable, and it's it is used wor worldwide. EOSIO blockchain. I think the viewers can go ahead and check it out. Right. Yeah. And in terms of security, it's very secure. It, it uses, okay, the system uses, the EOSIO system has a two-factor authentication system. Mm -hmm. where the, first, the first one is a synchronous, a synchronous Byzantine fault tolerance. Mm -hmm. And the second one, it, it has specific producers, not producers. So it, it makes the system very secure. Right. Yeah. And what else? Uh, talk about privacy hackers and now the cost of implementation. Mm, okay, uh, about privacy, like it's very difficult for someone to steal user data mm -hmm. from a from a blockchain network. It's it's, a, it's almost impossible. I should mm -hmm. I should say I should ascertain that it's almost impossible to steal anyone's data, and and okay. Uh, maybe, yeah, I, th I think it's almost impossible. But it's almost impossible. All right. Uh, now, uh, now that is interesting. So I would uh, really want that uh, you highlight to us about the cost because uh, you're seeing with the current system where IBC requested for uh, it budgeted for about 44 billion and uh, only 36 billion was accorded to IBC. What do you think the cost of uh, implementing this new technology will be some way so high than uh, what uh, the government could provide? No, it's, it's not even close to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are some specific things that we are supposed to do in elections. Right. So the first one is registering voters. The second one is voter when voter when the voter wants to log in mm -hmm. and you need to authenticate them. Then the third one is result tallying and storage. Then the fourth one is select the fifth one is electoral administration. All right. So when when it comes to registering users, it it costs. I cal I calculated it in the morning before I came here. Mm -hmm. It will cost around four shillings to register the user, for the blockchain network, mm -hmm. USIO blockchain network. Then it will cost around three hundred million shillings to register to verify all of these users. So, for example, we are using Face ID, Face ID authentication All right. to, for an individual to access the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So that, and then we need to verify this ID. So it will cost around 600 million uh, to verify these users and the national ID number, and if it is okay. And to store th this data, it will cost it will, it, will, it will cost less than three billion to to do th like three. Five billion to run to do the whole election, right? And 
over six over seventy percent of this money is refundable because we in EOS IO it's free to use the blockchain network. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about free. So the only thing you need to buy is RAM. Is the, the only thing you need to buy is RAM and you need to stake coins, coins that you have bought. Mm -hmm that you have bought from this from their system so it, staking coins means that you can unstake after okay. the elections right. so for example you stake 10 million coins do you'll be given you'll be given cpu central air uh, cpu and you'll be given net so uh, a net is like 20 mbps and things like that okay for simple for simplicity sake All right. and cpu is the is the processing the processing speed that the blockchain should use to handle your transactions because right. since it's a it's a network and it has limited resources mm -hmm. and so there has to be a way of pr prioritizing for people who want to build the system and people who are just trying to maybe hack into the system or do some illegal stuff into the system so when you stake your coins right. and you do, and you do something that uh, compromises on the security of the EOSIO, you mm -hmm. lose all of your coins. So you see, the more the more things you stake, the more risk you take in terms of EOSI, like buying, staking your coins, mm -hmm. the more they trust you all right. that you'll do the right thing. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Nice. Um, that is been so interesting. So. Um, I wish we could have another session uh, where you explain to us with the figures because I'm seeing um, the most important thing is the figures uh, to bring it out clearly the way you want it to come out. Yeah. Now, um, so what could be your final words maybe to the general public and uh, the stakeholders of uh, elections even as we gear to our general elections in 2022? Uh, okay, I think I have two, two things to say. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is, okay, we don't want to sell something that is not working. So we we, are, we want to conduct as many elections, personally as a company, as we can before before even we start talking with the IBC. So we are going to have our, f f our first elections next week on Friday. Next week on Friday, uh, I hope I hope if some influential people. Maybe it's, uh, people who have a lot of followers can help us spread the link and people sign in. Like we test the whole system, how it's working. All right. Yeah. And the second thing I wanted to say is the reason why I'm doing this. So I, I come from downtown Nakuru. In, in Nakuru in 2007, things were terrible. Mm -hmm. Things were absolutely terrible. I, but there I saw a lot of dead bodies. I don't know. It's something. Okay. I saw a lot of, yeah, like I experienced post-election violence firsthand. Right. So it's something that I don't want it to happen next year. Right. And, you know, okay, well, one of the things that, that people think uh, that causes post-election violence, they think it's tribalism. And I, I, think, I think it's not true. I think um, there are some people who want to actually cause violence so that they can take other people's property because uh, and it's it's what I saw in Nakuru. Mm -hmm. Like after people left, there are some people who came and took their properties, their land, they vandalized prop other people's things. So there are some people who want election violence come next year because uh, because they they'll be able to take other people's things and I hope we can prevent it. I hope that and the, the the problem is they have a perfect excuse, which is IBC. Everyone knows IBC cannot conduct free and fa free, fair and credible election. Right. The process, okay, they have saying that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So the IBC has good intentions, mm -hmm. but the processes for reaching these good intentions is they are they are too vulnerable there are a lot of loopholes right. like i like i was telling you you did not allow me to finish all the six principles right. okay as i was telling you the ibc okay what happened in 2017 hmm. i think the, the constituency italian officers they were the ones who were bribed all right like, yeah they were the ones who were bribed yeah. but come 2022 since like a lot of people will be watching mm -hmm. yet yeah, now you need to go a little lower Right. You need to bribe Pauline Clarks. 
Yeah, that is if you want to win elections. <laughs> Any aspirant, I think you will pay leakage. Ah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, so I think th- th- those are my two words. All right. We need to conduct free, fair, credible elections mm-hmm. to prevent to prevent vi- to, pre- to prevent violence. Yeah. Right. And the third reason each um, the third reason is As you can see I'm very I'm five seven I'm okay. very skinny ah. uh, like my balance is not mm. something I will readily participate sure unless it's absolutely necessary yeah, yeah. all <laughs> right so uh, thank you so much Anthony for that uh, insightful information uh, thank you we really hope to have you probably for another session with a lot of data so that you explain this to us and get to understand the data and the analytics of this yeah uh, and actually I, I thought I was going to come here and demonstrate right. but I think uh, maybe we can arrange something next week after the first election. You're right. Then we meet and then we discuss on the outcome the voter turnout and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. That will be so great. Now, so that has been Anthony Kimani. He's a founder of a startup company in Kenya that is rallying for incorporating technology through blockchain to change everything. They say change is inevitable and in every dimension of life we've got to change even in our elections the way we do things. In the past we used to have uh, the Mlolongo systems. Now, Now we are voting through universal suffrage we want to incorporate this technology blockchain we see how it goes now we'll be taking another break here on ktv primetime news in a moment we shall be coming back with more so keep it right here see you on the other side <laughs>